my name is Susan Miller, and welcome to Lakeside. So we have a couple of announcements for today. Um, first of all, I want to remind the council that we have a meeting on Thursday night. I sent out the Zoom link if you're doing that, and I will be here if you're coming here. So you can do it either way. It's at 7 p.m. Secondly, we have um, the MET team again at the end of the month. So we want to be sure to tell them what the date is. It's at the end of the month. Okay. Jan, do you remember? I thought we opted for later. I don't remember. Is it today? I think it's the first week of May. First, first week of May. May. Okay, thank okay. you, guys. Okay. And um, also, I bet you noticed these, right? These beautiful little um, quilts were made by Trudy and her mom. Elsie. See, I remembered your name. Um, and they are going to Jamie Laurent so that people in the hospital can get them. They're going to be blessed today before they move along on their merry way. Um, and then we have, um, you know, a birthday this week that's kind of a big deal. Um, and Jamie thought it was a good idea that we should sing. So it's Lonnie's birthday this week. Um, is there any chance you can play after your birthday? Because I would, it would be better. streams, 
Honor to you for waters that wash us clean and quench our thirst, for nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash us in Satisfy the world's need through this living water, where drought died, where drought drives the earth, bring refreshment, where despair prevails, grant hope, where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is I'm So Glad Jesus Lifted Me. Verses 1 and 2, number 860. All three, please stand.
makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of your faith, of our faith, <coughs> that we may see him in his redeeming word, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading comes from Acts chapter 2, verse 36 through 41. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourself from this corrupt generation. For those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day, <coughs> About 3,000 people were added. Word of God, word of love. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from Peter, chapter 1, verse 17 through 23. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know, you know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified our souls by your obedience, the truth so that you are you have genuine mutual love love one another deeply from the heart you have been born anew not of perishable but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of god for to god for to love I to god. we will skip now the gospel this morning comes from the gospel actually of luke 24th chapter at 13 verse. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. <clears throat> that very day, two, uh, two men were going to the village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. He said to them, What is this conversation which you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them said, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, and mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hope that he had come, been the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since this has happened. Moreover, some women in our company amazed us. They said that they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. And then they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with him, with us, were, went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see. And then he said to them, O oh, foolish men, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that Christ should have suffered these things and enter into his glory? <clears throat> Beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all the scriptures of things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He appeared to be going further, but they constrained him, saying, Stay with us, for it's towards evening, and the day is now, now far spent. 
So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it. He gave it to them, and their eyes were opened. They recognized him. He vanished out of their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us in the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose in the same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven gathered and those who were with them, who said, The Lord has risen indeed, and he's appeared to Simon. And they told what happened on the road and how he had known, made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The gospel of our Lord. Praise you, O Christ. So, the road to Emmaus, very, very, very powerful imagery, very powerful story. And in a way, we all have our own road to Emmaus. And by that, I mean, we all have that place where we want to go to escape. Life kind of gets too difficult to handle. Maybe a park or some woods to walk in. Maybe it could just be a movie or a hobby that takes our minds off the problems of the day. Fortunately, for some, it may be alcohol or drugs to anesthetize the mind or the heart for a while. But Emmaus was that place for these two disciples who couldn't take any more of the traumatic and yet salvific events of the days of that April so long ago. The stories of an empty tomb and angelic visions were just too much for Cleopas and his companion. They needed a place to escape from all this mess. Headed towards Emmaus. So the story of Emmaus is often told as a model for our liturgy itself. As the story is told because Jesus was the hope of salvation. Evil men killed him, and now there are rumors he is risen. And then the story is explained. In the beginning, with Moses and the prophets, he interpreted them and referred to him to the all and referred to him how they referred to him in all those different scriptures. Right? This is very clearly the reading that we do in the scriptures and the sermon that we give, clarifying how Jesus is in all our scriptures. Then Jesus and company sit down at a table. Jesus, and bread is blessed and broken and it's given to them. But then the travelers recognize Christ present in their midst. Don't need a degree in theology to see that that is exactly what the Eucharist prayer is all about. So, might be, not be so evident to us, but this is a story of disillusion and then illuminating travelers. Not only reveals the structure of liturgy, but also tells us something very important about the, about the way we worship. What happened in Emmaus, right, is not ultimately what the travelers had hoped would happen. That is, they didn't end up <laughs> escaping what they had planned, like they had planned. Rather, through word and meal, the Eucharist, as we see it, they come to confront exactly what they were trying to escape. Not only that, they embrace it and they return to the scene by the scene of the crime. They go back to Jerusalem, renewed and invigorated by the encounter of the Lord Christ Himself. This is important for us to realize because too often our service, right, has presented us as a place where we can go and get away from it. We have a moment of peace by leaving our troubles behind. The Eucharist is not a place where we go to escape the craziness and trials of this life. Rather, it's a place where we bring all that craziness and trials of our lives. It's where we bring it all to. The trials, the tragedies, the hopes, the fears, the grace, the sins. Bring it all to our God. The Lord puts it all in perspective for us through the word that we hear, hopefully we find in the context of scriptures, that God will be our strength and our forgiveness, our guide who shows us how all of this life is a part of his saving work. The Eucharist is where not only the beauty of life is offered to God, but also the messiness, the ugliness of our lives is offered to God as well. Because the Eucharist is where we encounter the sacrifice on Calvary, the beauty of an obedient son offering himself to save us is mixed with the ugliness of sin and death. The bread of angels and the cup of salvation is not simply food. 
It's a beautiful people of untroubled lives. It's divine nourishment for those who bear that cross of pain and brokenness as we journey through Calvary, through our purgatory, into Easter morning. The Eucharist is not an oasis, which gives us a break from life, so that we can simply return to his drudgery. The Eucharist is a place, is a source of strength that enables us to see, if we are willing to see, salvation that's unfolding in our lives. The highs and the lows of victories and defeats, joys and sorrows. It sends us forth to proclaim that reality to the world. So you've come here. To set our hearts on fire, burning our hearts, that these disciples speak about. Our hearts are ablaze with the good news of the gospel. They're energized, they energize people to witness that hope, the resurrection of Jesus. Burning hearts that pump new life into people so they can give their lives away for others. The disciples' burning hearts turn their hopelessness into hopefulness, their sadness into joy, into grief, and confusion, into an explosive excitement of sheer determination to share that experience. Remember, it was late in the day when they returned to Jerusalem for the other disciples. The Eucharist is not an escape. More than that, Emmaus ended up being, ended up being an escape. The Eucharist is any more than any. The Eucharist is not an escape any more than it may as well not be an escape. The Eucharist, however, is a source of peace, not because we escape the troubled world, but because we find He who is the Eucharist. The way that is to be recognized how to live in this world. When you come to the table, we do not leave behind our, our soiled past and our sadness and our defeats. But we bring our whole entire life to God. This is Cleopas and his fellow traveler ended up doing. Nothing is too messy for God. Nothing is too dirty for God. Nothing is too, too awful for God. We bring it all. And then we let Christ restore our strength, our hope, and our joy.
prayers of intercession united in the hope and joy of the resurrection. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Our petitions this morning will end with, Hear us, O God, to which all are invited to respond. Your mercy is great. Ever present God, you make yourself known in the breaking of the bread and in the bonds of communion. Reveal yourself to us in the faces of all we meet. Strengthened by your body and blood, let us boldly live out the good news. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. As we know you in the breaking of the bread, we know you in the grains of the field, the flowing waters. Care for the earth you lovingly create. Strengthen those who safeguard the enjoyment from water. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You are the authority to whom we dedicate our lives. Help us keep the needs of those most vulnerable and welcome of our community. Move us to care for any who are disregarded <coughs> or oppressed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Mother and God, you feed and comfort those who hunger. Open the hearts of those who pour resources and lead them to share your abundance. We pray for anyone hungering for your comforting presence this day. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You pour out your love on those who are oppressed. Support and comfort anyone who is marginalized by gender or sexuality, and those whose stories are not believed. Form this community to listen faithfully and speak honestly while we must speak together. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We remember with thanksgiving all your loved saints, as you have raised them to eternal life, abide with us in the promise of the resurrection. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, Almighty and eternal God, to Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Before you go, why don't you stay out here while Kim does go meet at your place? <laughs> and I'm thinking, Jane, you want to come up and get you be a part of the prayer? Since you're taking it, and you know, at least more hand over here. We're going to lay hands on the quilt as we try to get you. You just touch, put your hand on the quilt as we bless it. Just to be more and more energy out there. May God, God's grace be upon these quilts, warm, comfort, folding, and embrace. May this mantle be a safe haven, a sacred place, security and well being, sustaining and embracing in good times as well as difficult ones. May one who sees you and wears and comforts by this, by these quilts, be cradled in hope. Captain of joy, grace and peace, wrapped in love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And I would like to give everybody who is able and cares to please stand. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace. We will skip the auditory hymns for this week. Next week, the correct one will be in it. We'll write to the auditory there. Generous God. In this meal, you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts on the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour out of the sins of this world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. When we eat this bread, we share in the body of Christ. When we drink from this cup, we share the blood of Christ. Yield yourself to us, O Lord, in the breaking of bread, as you once revealed yourself to your disciples.
we stand for the blessing. In the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in Jesus Christ. Thank you. With your word and this name of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world. In Jesus' name, amen. May Almighty God bless you on this solemn feast of Easter. And may he protect you against all sin. Amen. Through the resurrection of his son, God granted his healing. May he fulfill his promise and bless you with eternal life. Amen. You have mourned for Christ's sufferings, now celebrating the joy of his resurrection. May you come with joy to the feast which is past forever. Amen. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Our Father in this, come thou fond of every blessing, verse 1 and 2, number 807. <laughs> Thanks be to God.